Let's start this conversation by you giving us a background information into the mandate given to the Fiscal Responsibility Commission and some of your oversight functions. Maybe that could be the starting point for us. Just give us a background, an overview of these uh, oversight functions and some of the mandates given to the Fiscal Responsibility Commission. Thank you. I'll keep it simple. Uh, using what we call a grammar daisy rule, such that even a grandma that's 92 years that didn't go to school will understand it. That's, I'll try to do that. Basically, the Fiscal Responsibility Commission is established by the Fiscal Responsibility Act of uh, 2007 for the purpose of uh, promoting accountability in fiscal issues, promoting transparency, Accountability means what when you do something regarding revenue, regarding expenditure in government, the federal government particularly, you give your report duly and uh, timelessly. Transparency means transparency means let it be open and accessible to citizens and to other stakeholders. The Fiscal Responsibility Commission also has a responsibility or a function to promote prudence in the management of the nation's resources. Prudence means use it in such a way that it makes sense, basically, in the street uh, bus stop language. Relate to the nation's resources, manage the nation's resources in a way that you think of the generations to come take best decisions as they were, not selfish decisions. The commission also has a responsibility to ensure that um, the management of the nation's resources, the budgeting system is uh, streamlined, is predictable, is understandable, so that um, the man on the street will know what is, um, to which application his money uh, public money is being put and will also understand his responsibility towards contributing his own bit towards the revenue of the of the of the nation as it were there is another responsibility that um, is not often spoken about of the fiscal responsibility commission that is to ensure that economic decisions are aligned with uh, the economic objectives of the nation set out in section 16 of the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria 1999 constitution as amended which is to say if we are budgeting if we are expanding or uh, spending government uh, resources if we are discussing if we are reporting if we are putting ourselves towards uh, fiscal issues economic issues generally including monetary issues because there are also economic issues we must keep our eyes on the ball. And the ball in this event is the welfare of the citizen on the street. Section 16 of the, of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So the commission was established um, uh, by the Act in 2007, started activities 2008, 2009. Since then, um, we've taken very seriously part of what we did in um, the training that um, you just um, spoke about, which is to a responsibility to uh, disseminate good practices among practitioners. So what we did at the event, if you permit me to run a bit ahead, it's possibly in your question, uh, your question sequence, but if you permit me to run ahead, what we did was to, um, in collaboration with ADAC, get together those who implement and those who plan the budget and the expenditure framework and the sector strategies, basically those who plan the fiscal um, management uh, documents and um, speak to them on enhancing uh, the revenues of government, their own responsibilities, as well as the wider picture and improve spending efficiency. Thank you.
Okay, let's look further now into the training uh, that was uh, held in partnership uh, with uh, African Development Studies Center, the uh, Fiscal Responsibility Commission coming into partnership with them. Now, before this time, there have been talks about prudent management of the nation's resources, but why uh, heighten the conversation at this point? And why look specifically at enhancing revenue generation and expenditure management? Um, you may have heard that um, Nigeria has been borrowing. I, I heard somebody speaking on your program before I came on about uh, loans and loans and loans. And um, the nation needs to begin to think of um, other sources outside uh, loans for funding its deficit. Well, I guess you've heard that um, Nigeria's problem is um, Nigeria has a huge revenue problem, which is to say the government needs money. Individuals are, um, are doing well. Yeah, the GDP is the highest in Africa. But incidentally, re government revenue, when you compare it to the GDP, uh, it's not uh, panning out well like other countries in africa to put it again in grammar's language it's like um, you have citizens it's true our citizens are, are not uh, very fabulously rich but the nation itself is rich because it has the highest gdp in africa and gdp means the sum of final economic activities final goods and services produced in the country less um, the exports within a period of one year so all the economic activities, legitimate, recognized economic activities that take place in Nigeria within a period of one year is greater in value than what takes place in South Africa, which is number two, what takes place in Egypt, what takes place in, of course, Ghana, Gambia, and so on and so forth. So to that extent, Nigeria is rich, yeah. Nigeria is rich to that extent. Number one GDP in Africa. But now the uh, curiosity or the downside of that is that the government itself in these other countries get more revenue out of all these activities of uh, its citizens and government than Nigeria does. So it's become necessary for government to encourage its citizens to see this as a challenge that needs to be solved. Government revenue needs to go up year after year We've seen government budgets, government budgets, and um, having a deficit, you know. And um, deficit means government is spending more than is coming in. Why is government spending more than is coming in? Because there are projects that need to be done. There are expenses, there are uh, 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 mandatory, as it were, expenses that the government must meet. Government must pay salaries, uh, federal government must pay salaries of its workers. This is not discretionary. Government must pay uh, debts that is owing before it's due. This is non-discretionary. Um, then the money that is left, you now determine how do we apportion it amongst uh, projects. Some are developmental projects, some are basic over, overhead uh, projects for running the government. And by the time government does that over the years, it finds itself needing to spend more than um, it's getting, it needs, uh, it's going to get in its estimation consistently. So that's called a deficit. We've carried this deficit over, over and over each year as a deficit. And the challenge or a characteristic of deficit is that there has got to be a deficit financing. It's got to be financed. And that money has to come from somewhere. And the, the place is going to be financed from, one of the places uh, is debt. You need to borrow in order to do the work. So um, the thought has come that, um, look, let's look at um, generating more revenue that is legitimately due government so that we can fund the budget, whether fund the deficit or basically fund our expenditure plans. And that's the essence of um, what uh, we came to do. It's become critical. Uh, we know there has been talk about, okay, um, fine, uh, let's, let's improve uh, revenue to GDP. That's what it's called. 
that's the revenue ratio of re government revenue versus the total value of total legitimate activities that go on within uh, the country in a year so that we can reduce uh, uh, debt, reduce the need for borrowing. Um, so I hope that addresses it. All right. Now, I would like you to give us insight into some of the rules, you know, or if I may say do's and don'ts guiding, you know, public revenue and expenditure as provided in the provision that, you know, guides the activities of the commission. What are some of these rules, some of these do's and don'ts that has to be imbibed when it comes to the management of public funds and the issue of expenditure? Okay, let me start from the idea of rules in the first place. You know, you have two options when it comes to spending your money. You spend using best of judgment, which is what Nigeria used to do. Let's get the best people, let's trust them, let them spend our money, let's trust that they are guiding us the right way. The other option is to set uh, guardrails, like somebody climbing a staircase and you put guardrails. Don't trust that these guys will fall off. Don't trust that a child will not be given the power to make decisions for us. So let's build guardrails, as it were. So um, what fiscal responsibility are? Um, before fiscal responsibility, we had um, people running the economic decision based on uh, best of judgment, basically, uh, also based on certain regulations, but never was there a, a statutorily or legally or a legal instrument that backed those decisions or guided the decisions. We just trusted people, the system trusted people and believed that they would do well. But by early 2000s, we have found ourselves in a pit economically and debt-wise. So part of um, fiscal responsibility engagement was to set rules. Part of that rule is that, hey, you can spend more than, or well, in the event that you spend, you plan to spend more than your revenue, you must not spend more than 3% of the GDP, you know? So that put a cap of uh, budget deficit on 3% of GDP. It's true that in recent uh, years, um, a proviso came in to water down, down a bit, say, look, um, you can exceed 3% of GDP if there are extenuating, extenuating circumstances, but still technically is 3% of GDP that is a guide. So that is one limit. So government is not free to go and borrow that kingdom come. That's one rule. Then secondly, um, that's at the big picture level. At the functional level, which is the ministries, departments, and agencies of government, they are told that um, we, we now tell them through the functionality of the act and um, uh, the finance act as well, the fiscal responsibility act, the finance act, as well as uh, uh, seculars and other, other regulations, that um, there is also a limit to what you can do with the revenue that comes into your coffers. Before the advent of the fiscal responsibility act, um, Ministry, departments, and agencies, we are allowed to spend the revenues that they generate. But uh, with the advent of the Fiscal Responsibility Act, Section 22, I believe, now limited what um, an agency or a department can spend. It now said, at the end of the year, audit your financial, uh, audit your financial um, records, and whatever is the excess of revenue over the expenditures you had, must you will now keep 20% of it and you must 80% of it back to the consolidated uh, revenue fund of the federal government. It, that was a novel um, addition into the income stream of the federal government. Don't spend all that you have. So that's another rule. That's another ceiling. That's another cap. Keep only 20%. Revert 80% into the, into the basket, as it were. So the federal government can have money 
the next year for doing its business. Then that has been uh, um, on. And um, after a while, after a while, can you still hear me, please? I can hear you. Please go ahead. Hello, can you still hear me? Yes, please go ahead. We can hear you. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So that's been uh, also moderated um, a, 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 a bit because um, ministries, departments, and agencies have now, by certain recent um, secular, been reclassified into three. Some are fully funded by the government. If the government gives you all your money to run your business, to pay your salaries, to buy uh, 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 equipment that's for your capital, for your overhead, for your personnel, then buy jobs. Any revenue that comes your way, be it a penny, be it a trillion, let it go back to government. Because you've already made a budget, your budget has been entirely accommodated um, to the best to the uh, best possible extent of the government in the financial um, year's budget. And you're given that money according to uh, the financial rules and uh, uh, existing circulars. So any money that comes your way, you should not spend it because it's not in the budget. Revert 100% of it to the coffers of the federal government. This is the adjustment made uh, to that uh, regulation because the initial regulation in any case just had to do with um, what we call corpor scheduled corporations. There are corporations that are in the schedule to the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Then there's a second uh, category, those who are partially funded by the budget. That is to say, um, possibly the federal government pays uh, their salaries, takes care of their overheads, but um, they take care of uh, their capital outlays. So for those other agencies, whatever revenue that comes in, they need to immediately send 50% of it. Immediately as revenue is coming in, let 50% of it go back to the federal government. And uh, the rest 50% of it, there is a, a directive for treating it. Then there are those who are fully funded, who, sorry, who are self-funded. There are agencies of government that exist and transact on the revenues they raise and, um, and uh, they do business themselves. The government does not extraneously put money into their budget. It's from the businesses that they do, as if, yeah, if you permit the term business, that they raise their own money. Those ones are not permitted to keep 100% of the money of the uh, um, excess they raise of the money they raise either. So there's this categorization, there are, uh, there are three categories. We needed this um, event to drill it down to the operators because we spoke, the people we spoke with are the people in audit, the people in finance, the people who are the players in the money system uh, of, the, of the federal government. We needed them to understand their space. We also needed them to understand the logic of the federal government in doing what it's doing. Um, that logic is that um, independent revenue, you know, the revenue coming from uh, uh, internally generated um, sources of uh, ministry departments and agencies, as well as what we call operating surplus, that's that 80% uh, of um, the uh, surplus of NDAs. It has become an important component in um, the budget, um, in the budget mix of the federal government. It used to be, well, neither here nor there. We had money flowing in from um, tax, from oil, and so on and so forth. But now it's become important. If as at um, for three years now, it's hitting over one trillion. Like you must have heard the chairman of the fiscal... All right, Let, let's look at the budgeting system. Now, I was at the training okay. yesterday and some of the questions that the participants from the various ministries, uh, departments and agencies raised was on expenditure. Now, uh, you also mentioned uh, while talking earlier that uh, part of the responsibility of the fiscal or part of the, the duties of the Fiscal Responsibility Commission is to ensure that economic decisions align 
with the economic objectives of the nation. Now, looking at budgets of the budgets of various ministries and agencies in 2024, in your assessment, does it quite align with the um, economic objectives of the country? Because expenditure is also as important as revenue, what you put the money into. How does the commission yeah, ensure you, that the expenditure are what would translate into development in line with the economic objectives of the nation? Thank you. Like you said, expenditures are, are also as important as revenue. As a matter of fact, expenditures may just be more important than revenue because expenditures are the route by which um, the agenda of the government is uh, is uh, given life. Uh, it's the expenditure that we use to make possible the renewed growth agenda, for instance. Yeah, as to the question uh, to regarding um, uh, does the 2024 budget align appropriately with, uh, with uh, Section 16 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? I will say yes. In the first place, there is a budget. So that's um, a good one. There, is, uh, there was a clear process for producing that budget. There was a sectoral a sector strategy that was thought through. Um, there's a fiscal strategy paper that uh, tried to look at uh, the next three years and uh, look at what the priorities should be, look at what the objectives of um, the fiscal objectives should be regarding employment, regarding inflation, regarding um, economic growth, and uh, so on and so forth. And um, the there was also now um, envelopes, ministries contributed, the ministries uh, contributed their projects. I believe those projects align with the National Development Plan, um, which is uh, a more over aching plan that's made in Nigeria somewhere. I also believe that uh, they, they had, since there were there are ministers from the ruling government, they also aligned with the renewed group agenda. Yes, they did. And um, it also now went to the National Assembly for appropriate, those were suggestions, as it were, those were proposals to the National Assembly. It's called budget proposal. The National Assembly also interrogated uh, the documents and the uh, at the National Assembly being representatives of the people, uh, carrying the mandate of the people, they looked at that alignment or they were supposed to look at it. Yeah, Fiscal Responsibility Commission, do you agree 100% that all the items align fully and completely with Section 16? I, I don't think so. There are, a pro, there are um, items in the budget that left to us as uh, an independent fiscal analyst, analyst uh, as independent fiscal analyst, we could say, look, this should have gone here, this should have gone there. But so far, the process is running. Um, like I keep saying, I keep quoting Martin Luther King, who says, we're not yet where we want to be, but thank God we're not where we used to be. There was a time in this country where budget probably were pulled from the moon. They could have been pulled from anywhere. You know, the people were not consulted. There was no pretense as to uh, a, a, a process that involved the, the people, so on. So far, we're making progress. Yeah, I would say so.